Rocket tombs that are pretty widespread in the central Mediterranean, so as uh, Marie-Elise has shown in her, her nice map, they're all over the place. Um, so Sardinia in that sense is not so um, original, so we have lots of rocket tombs. Most of the time they are clustered together in, in cemeteries. Uh, but one particularity of Sardinia is that there are lots of decorated rocket tombs. Uh, they have quite a complex internal architecture with a lot of different spaces and rooms. And many of them are actually uh, supposed to imitate interiors of houses or, or buildings. So that's why they are locally called Domus de Llanas, which means house, house of the fairies. Um, right, so in the last 25 years or even the last 50 years, a lot of research has been done in uh, these rocket tombs in Sardinia. Uh, most of them are focused on the, I would say, the internal parts of these monuments, so lots of surveys, uh, typological classifications and uh, studies, uh, excavations, of course, and here you see a picture of an ongoing project by um, my colleague Maria Grazia Melis from the University of, uh, of Sassari. So it's a lot, lot of work has been done, but uh, paradoxically, little attention has been paid to their landscape uh, context. I said paradoxically because for the later period in Sardinia, where you have the neuralgic powers, a lot of GIS studies or you know, more spatial analysis have been done. But for the rocket tombs, despite the fact that there are so many of them and they are crying for spatial analysis, so no, nothing has been really done. Uh, in a very systematic or quantitative way so far. And in a way, it's a missed opportunity to address important questions, because when you look at the landscape context of the tombs, you can uh, ask why they are they were created in this specific location. So Marie Elise, for example, were um, showing some maps with the settlements and the location of the tombs. But if we exclude just the settlements for now, and if you walk in this landscape starting you see a lot of rock faces that were suitable for rocket tombs, but the rocket tombs were made slightly elsewhere or you know, in other locations. Why were the tombs made there and not there? So whether there were any cosmological implications, is it due to, due to uh, orientation or proximity to big mountains or big rivers? There might, be, there might be some kind of specific attributes that need to be identified. Uh, and then, of course, there's all the questions of the connection with the uh, the settlements. So whether the settlements were close by or far away, and this links. And that's the real the real thing that interests me here is uh, all all these social relationships between the, the dead and the living. As we can see them through this landscape relationship between the settlements and the village. So um, how the dead were perceived and how whether they were perceived as, for example. The dangerous entities or maybe important entities for daily life decision. So you would probably place the dead in different locations in the landscape to reflect or to enable this particular type of uh, social relationship with your uh, dead relative. So, of course, there are lots of challenges, and uh, the main the main challenge for this kind of study, if we focus on the settlements themselves, is that they are very elusive, so we don't know much about the, the contemporary settlements for the pre neurotic period in Sardinia. It's uh, partly due to the fact that the landscape is very eroded, so uh, we don't have many standing structures in Sardinia for the period, but probably also for a lack of systematic research, systematic survey, trying to identify evidence for settlements in the, uh, the surrounding. And so for the period, so for the pre neurotic Sardinia, most of the evidence we have for settlements are mostly in the southern part of the island where we have not so many rocket tomb sites. So if you, if you want to study the relationship between rocket tombs and their contemporary settlements, you basically have to get the information by, by yourself. And that's what we, we try to do uh, in a project based in Ossi in northwest Sardinia um, over the last uh, three years. And we picked up this area for, for one good reason is that in, the, in, this, in this particular area of Osi, you have an important concentration of cemeteries. Um, so there are, you can see on this map, there are like four main, four main groups. And at the beginning, we had a big project to do lots of survey around all of them, but we had to 
focus on one particular site which I'm going to focus now, which is called Mezu and Montes. Mezu and Montes is the name of that particular uh, rocket um, cemetery which is in, shown in red here. It's quite a big cemetery, it has 18 rocket tombs. Uh, it's been known for, for many years and, um, and uh, uh, my colleague Derudas has done some preliminary survey in the mid-90s in the region. But of course we wanted to do something different and to again try to do a detailed survey and try to look at the relationship with the landscape and the settlement. So, we did different things. We did a uh, uh, 3D re recording of all the, the tombs uh, uh, using photogrammetry. And the objective was not just to create a nice documentation of the architecture and the decoration, because many of these tombs are wall decorations, as you can see in, in this image. Uh, it was also to have georeference, very accurate georeference plans of each of these tombs in order to check things, for example, like uh, orientation of these monuments in the landscape. And I'll go back to this point later. Uh, so we recorded the tombs, we recorded the, the topography, because it's, it's quite a complex and interesting topography we have here. Uh, so we just yeah, do some, we've done some drone photogrammetry, again, georeference using a GPS, so there's kind of standard methodology today. Uh, just to create a topographic map like this one, and I wonder if I can use the uh, yeah. So just to just to present briefly the uh, the topography here, we have a we have a, a big hill, Monte Mama, who, with all the the tombs or almost all the tombs being located on the same uh, rock leaf on the on the edge of this mountain, and then you have a a small valley and then another high plateau <laughs> here called Monte Manu where you have one isolated tomb here, uh, which is also typologically different from the other ones. It's typologically, it looks like it belongs to an earlier phase of the, uh, uh, of the uh, rocket tomb tradition in Sardinia. So that's for the, the topography and the, uh, the tomb orientation is something interesting. Uh, when you look at the literature, what you find most of the time is that the tombs are in generally orientated to the southeast uh, part of the landscape, which is traditionally interpreted as a cosmographical perception, as the rising sun being uh, important for the regeneration of the dead, and, and so on. Uh, but what we notice here is that in that particular site, the, the orientation of the tomb may vary from one tomb to another. And when, when I speak about orientation, it's something quite easy to to check because all these monuments tend to be very linear in design. They have several spaces or rooms that are separated by small rectangular windows or, or doorways. So if you just look through this alignment of doorways, you can have an idea of where the tomb is actually looking at in the, uh, the landscape. So if you imagine this kind of central axe, uh, axis of the tombs, and then you uh, look at this, some of them have interestingly built, some of these tombs are interestingly built not exactly perpendicular to the rock face, which would be the the simplest solution if you want to develop your rocket tomb in, in the available rock. So there may be a different explanation for this, but uh, it looks like it's a deliberate choice to follow one specific orientation which is not determined by, I would say, practical reason. And then if you, if you look at the uh, general map of orientation of these tombs, uh, so they, they are placed in different ways, but they tend to converge to this, this big top hill, which is called Monte Manu, which I presented before. This is the, the one with this isolated tomb here. So I'll go back to this, and that leads into the, uh, the, the third objective of this project, which was to retrieve evidence for, for settlement in this particular site. And uh, I just skip this, because of course we can do GIS predictive analysis as a, as a preliminary exercise, but uh, the best way to do this is to do systematic survey and to, in this case, we had a GPS to record every single piece of uh, pottery or flint and we ended up with nice concentration maps which basically are showing the same thing. So all the pottery, all the flints, all the uh, obsidian are concentrated uh, on the top and on the western slope of this Monte Manu. So if you look at the overall picture, we have a nice pattern with all the tombs converging towards the Monte Manu where you almost certainly had the settlements. 
contemporary with the symmetry and of course now we have to develop this hypothesis so if you there are other evidence for a settlement here you have some structural remains post holes uh, old stone structures that need to be excavated and dated and in terms of chronology just based on the uh, the, the stone pottery or well, sorry the, the the pottery we found on the surface we have a quite a wide range of uh, chronology we have shirts that uh, are from the middle uh, neolithic which is fitting with the uh, probably with the the first uh, period of use of the site for the for the cemetery because we have this uh, tomba pozzetto which is typical from the middle neolithic in sardinia and then we have more material from the late neolithic up to the middle bronze age which again corresponds to the later phase of use in the cemetery with this nice uh, stele facade rocket tombs that were built in that period I just wanted to mention that this last summer we have started excavation as well and this Montemanu site which uh, tends to confirm the uh, the hypothesis of this being a certain site so we found uh, some uh, architectural remains and some uh, some further you know pottery we couldn't go very deep into the excavation because we were surprised by the good preservation of the of the context so we mostly excavated the uh, uh, probably middle and uh, ancient Bronze Age phases of the site, but uh, it's uh, that looks very prom promising. So to to conclude about the uh, this landscape approach, it, it, it proves at least for this site to be a quite useful approach that may, in a way, change the way we see these rocket tunes or why they were built in these particular areas of the landscape. So it looks. In this case, at least, that there is a very strong relationship, landscape relationship between the uh, the landscape position and the orientation of the tombs and uh, and the village of the living. So that that brings interesting things. Again, if we try to interpret this socially, so we have the the, the village of the dead who are separated from the village of the living, but the two are closely related. They are visually connected. So that probably means that the, the dead were quite important. To be to be visible on the kind of daily life uh, basis in in this in those societies. I suppose the next point would be to explore questions of architecture. So if we're lucky enough to find uh, late Neolithic architecture, for example, with with plans of houses, it'd be interesting to address whether the tombs who are imitating houses are actually imitating houses or more special special buildings or other things. So that's me. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending.